Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Okay, so the flesh, it has lust and it has works. And these certain works are manifest. They're shown. This is very important to understand. Whatever sinful thing you have in your life, it's going to show. You can't hide it forever. And the same thing with the Holy Spirit. Whatever spiritual thing you do, you can't hide it. It's going to show. Like Jesus said, these Pharisees, they pray out loud out in the streets so that people can hear them. That's not spiritual. Jesus said, you pray in the closet. Why? Because trust me, it will show. Pray out loud on the street. It shows what kind of person you are. You're a show off. <laughs> Okay, so these things will be shown outwardly. So let's look at these works. And if you have some of these works right here, it should put you under conviction. You can preach a whole sermon right here. So you ready to get preached at? Here we go. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Whatever work you have in your flesh, it's going to show. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Okay, what are those? Adultery means committing a sexual action against your spouse. So you're cheating on your spouse with another man or with another woman. So that is adultery. Fornication, what is that? That is having sexual relationships outside of marriage. So outside of marriage, that's why we don't believe in premarital sex. Why do you have to teach safe sex ed? You know why you're doing that? Because you're automatically assuming these young teenagers, they're going to go out and fornicate. That's why you're teaching them that. And why do you have to teach it even at a younger and a younger age? And now you have to pass the law concerning sexual fluidity and that kind of garbage. Why are you doing that? You know why? Because that's how depraved the works of the flesh is. And we have to get younger and younger so that we can teach everyone out there and embrace all sorts of sexualities out there. But look at this one, and that matches with uncleanness. So guess what? That thing that they passed out in California, that is uncleanness. Amen. It is unclean. Homosexual, this includes homosexuality, pedophilia, bestiality, anything unclean. So what is uncleanness right here? What's well, simple. Just read it as it says, anything that's not clean. Give me a verse on what's wrong with pornography. Is that clean? Right here, it's uncleanness. And notice that this uncleanness is in the context of what? Sexual. Something sexual. So there's your verse on pornography. There's your verse on what's wrong with getting a picture wearing a bikini and strutting around like a beautiful model because it's uncleanness. That's what it is. It's not clean. It's not clean dressing. All right. Let's keep reading right here. Clean dressing. So now that would make you think twice now when you fellowship with the brethren. Is your dressing clean? All right. Do I have to give rules and regulation right here? Or do you really have the Holy Spirit that you're led? Okay. Well, I'm not preaching, so let's keep reading. Last part of verse 19, lasciviousness. Okay, what is lasciviousness? That is something very heinous, sexually perverted, and dark, actually. So, yes, you can include really abnormal sexual sins over here as well. So, real dark things. So, lasciviousness. So, notice verse 19. Everything right here is sexual sins. You notice that, verse 19? All of these are sexual sins. What's very interesting to me is that when the Bible talks about the works of the flesh, at verse 19 through 21, the majority has to do with sexual sins. You notice that? It's sexual. Why is that? Because one of the strongest cravings of the flesh is sexual. In my opinion, this has been the more detrimental effect more than money concerning pastors, more than power concerning pastors, more than compromise. It is sexual. This has been one of the most dark forces, one of the worst things. This has happened, yes, even in Bible-believing pastors and churches, independent fundamental Baptist churches. And there are cases after cases of, which is sad, of an independent fundamental Baptist church, they always do a cover-up. They always do a cover-up. 
and they act like the Catholic Church with their priests transferring them to a different ministry or monastery. That's wickedness. That's wickedness. This is really bad. This is not surprising in large IFB churches, independent fundamental Baptist churches. You might ask why. The reason why is because you get more power and you see more people and you're going to see more attractable faces. And especially since you focus on a bus ministry, youth people, do you know how easy prey they are? That's why insurance companies and certain uh, government restrictions, what they would do is that they want you to do some kind of orientation class on youth teachers. It's bad. You know why? Because some saved Christians can't learn to keep their hands to themselves. You see how dark this is? This is the majority of the lust of the flesh. Why? Because this is a strong lust. It's something strong, a strong desire. Let's keep reading here, verse 20. Idolatry. Okay, so worshiping idols. So do you have an idol that you worship? So we cover sexual sins. Another one is idolatry right here. So concerning idolatry, do you worship an idol? Well, I don't worship idols, Pastor. Well, the thing is this, is that, okay, I spelled wrong. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so in idolatry, the thing is, is that there's someone that you worship or honor more than God. So if you're spending more time with somebody else, you respect someone more than God. Let's say that uh, you're a wife or you're a husband and you respect more on the husband, more on the wife, more than God, and that's why you make compromises in your service to God. And marriage, next to busyness, marriage has been the number two problem why people fall away from church. Why? Because of that spouse. So then, do you prioritize that person more than God? A lot of people talk about celebrities, brag about celebrities. They'll name a celebrity, all right? I think Brad Pitt is old news now, and I don't know who, who's a new one coming out, okay? But they'll name all these stars and celebrities. They're called idols, right, to them? Why? Because they idolize these people. They idolize these people. And they mention more on that person than Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you know what's really sad? A celebrity's name will receive more hits on a YouTube video than Jesus Christ. Now, you go home and pray about that for a while. Okay, verse 20, keep reading. Witchcraft. Oh, I'm not, uh, that's not me, pastor, so I'm free. So witchcraft is self-explanatory right there. So let's include Harry Potter books right here. No, pastor, no. Yes, it is. It's witchcraft. Made in innocent form, so that makes it even more wicked because it fools you. It's deceptive. Witchcraft. I can tell you, uh, there's a documentary that's early 2000s, just early 2000s, and they'll give you cases of all these letters from little children who talked about applying to a witch school because they read Harry Potter books. Letter after letter after letter, just early 2000s. How about that? Witchcraft. But you know what the Bible says? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft at 1 Samuel chapter 15. So you know what? If you're this type of person that rebels against the church and the pastor, then you better repent and get right with God because you're a witch, that means. Oh, that will preach, right? Rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Children dishonoring their parents, that is witchcraft, you got to understand. Mm -hmm. Wives not submitting to the husband, Rebelling against them? What is that? You're a witch. You can get mad at me, but don't scream like a witch in front of me, okay? That's Bible. Members not submitting to the pastor? You're a witch. Citizens not submitting to the government? Oh, you're a witch. No. Did you read the book of Jude? The book of Jude said these are people who rebel against authority, which is in context government. And you know what the Bible says they are? These are people that are really crude, messed up creatures and beasts. So God takes authority seriously. 
The authority is flawed and messed up. Hey, that's God's business with them. Let me ask you this question. If God sets you up a leader, do you expect that leader to be perfect? Everyone's a sinner. When should you rebel? When their authority overrides God's authority, friend. So I don't care what Obama, Hillary, or Trump, or whoever will say to me to bow the knee to Baal. I ain't going to bow the knee to Baal. If they say that you're going to get killed, then I get in prison. That's it. Period. What if uh, my husband, my wife, prevents me from coming to church? You ought to obey God rather than men. Mom tell you not to come to the Bible Baptist Church anymore. Don't ride that bus ministry, child. You ought to obey God rather than men. Well, the pastor, he messed up right here in this church, so you know what? I'm going to gossip to the other person over here. Spread. Nope, you ought to. You got to be careful of that. But if the pastor tells you, hey, you know, uh, we teach that we're going to go through the tribulation. We're not going to get raptured before the tribulation. You ought to obey God rather than men. That is a heretic. That is a heresy teaching. Because the Bible teaches a pre-tribulation rapture. So you got to realize this is that, see, you got to be careful of this rebellious attitude. Especially if you're one of those pastors out there. I'm including pastors here. This is not just members being rebellious. These are even pastors being rebellious. How so, pastor? Oh, for example, some person does not like to listen to elderly pastors. So they want to start their own little movement. And the only way they can retreat to is online. Because that's the only way they're going to get attention. And they start their own little cult movement. And they call themselves King James only, independent, fundamental, Baptist, blah, blah, blah. No, man, you're a rebel. Amen. And you know what? You are a witch. You're full of the devil. Amen. In fact, pastors are more full of the devil than the members concerning rebellion. You might say, how so? Because a pastor is responsible for the souls of the people. So that is more hideous. So I take pastoring seriously. I really take this seriously. I know how to build up bigger subscribers, bring more members in. But I always turn them off many times. Why? Because I know what turns them off, but I can't compromise the truth. Amen. I ain't going to be a rebel. All right, so let's return to our main text here. Verse 20, hatred. Ah, so you got to get rid of that ha hatred within you. That's a work of the flesh. Someone annoyed you. You're witnessing to somebody, and they made you angry, and you want to hate them. That is a fleshy reaction. When you're witnessing to someone, they make you angry and you feel like hating them. That is a work of the flesh. And when we see that attitude out of you in street preaching, especially these wicked street preachers who try to deliberate, they deliberately start up controversy and wrath yep. and hatred. That one is full of the devil right there. We believe in street preaching. We do street preaching. We believe in rebuking sin and not compromising. I don't hesitate. I have street preached in front of homosexuals, said right in front of their face. I quoted all of Genesis 19 right in front of their face before. All right? I don't compromise. I don't flinch. But I ain't going to give that kind of attitude where I deliberately start up a fight, name call them, have a sign that says faggot, and then start, deliberately stir up the ire with people, and then use shock tactics. That is full of the devil. That is full of the flesh. Street preachers are not filled with the Holy Ghost when they preach. You know what they're doing is full of the flesh right there. Why are they street preaching that long? Oh, they're used of God. No, because that, that gives them something for their flesh. It is a fleshy ministry right there. You know what's not fleshy? When they mock you, persecute you, and you take it in, yeah. and you suck it up like a soldier, and you quote scripture unflinchingly, and you try to show them how to get saved. That, is that fleshy, you think? Or is that Holy Spirit led? Because you're controlling your flesh. That's proof that when you fire back at them, that is a work of the flesh, when you show off hatred. They show hate at you, and you show hatred in return, that's fleshy. Yeah. 